Welcome to The Point. I'm your host, Anna Kasparian, and today you can look forward to a number of crazy stories, including a woman who called in two fake bomb threats to a university because, uh, well, she wanted to cover up a lie. Also, women madly in love with priests, and they're actually doing something about it. And also, Spanx for your face. Is that something that's actually going to... Uh, improve women's looks and is there a market for it and confirmation that beer goggles do exist it turns out that researchers looked into this and some people do see through rose-colored glasses after they get shwasted and finally uh, people walking around town naked specifically hot women and no one takes notice we'll give you the details on that and more but before we get to all these fun stories let's meet our panelists we have some superstar tyt originals on the show today jr jackson he's the senior producer of the young turks and also ben mankiewicz who is the co-host of What the Flick, TYT Sports, and also makes appearances on every single show on the network. <laughs> Who do you got to blow to be an executive producer of TYT? <laughs> you like, been here like 27 years. Well, you know, it's, it's a whole different level. I feel like senior producer sounds a little more powerful. I, I like it senior does, producer. It does, it does sound, yeah. yeah. All right, uh, so let's move on to the first story. Danielle Shea was supposed to be a student at Quinnipiac University. In fact, her parents were giving her thousands of dollars to attend the school and actually live on campus. Well, graduation day came around, and it turns out that she dropped out a long time ago. When her mom showed up to the graduation ceremony and noticed that she wasn't on the roster, she kind of panicked. So what did her daughter do? She called into the university while she was wearing her cap and gown and basically made two bomb threats. She called once and said that there was going to be a bomb, and then when she noticed that they hadn't moved the ceremony to a different location yet, or they hadn't canceled the ceremony, she called again and said, you don't understand, you better cancel this graduation. Uh, well, they moved it to a different area. The ceremony still happened, although it was delayed about an hour and a half, and uh, agents, FBI agents, were easily able to track her because she used her cell phone to make the phone calls. Now, uh, she is being held on bond and she faces some very serious charges as a result of what she did, but I'm curious to see what our panel has to say. Ben, make your point. No one cares where you went to college. No one ever checks. She was close to the perfect lie simply go buy and get printed a fake graduation thing, say you couldn't walk with your class, pretend you're taking a summer school class, steal some more, steal some more money from your mom, and move on. <laughs> Jared Jackson, make your point. If you're trying to get out of something, don't go with something that's straight out of a sitcom. <laughs> we've seen, like we've seen this a million times, a bomb threat, a bomb threat. So you have to think further ahead than this just to get out of something. If you're going to come up with a lie, come up with something somewhat original, I can see why she dropped out. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think that uh, it would probably make more sense for her to just be honest with her mom from the very beginning. It turns out that she had a hard time paying for college. They could have worked through that and found a way for her to She's pay for college. She's been stealing money from I her mother. I know, I know. I really, I, I feel... She was this close she to was, say, I can't yeah. walk with my class, I failed geology, I'm going to take it in the summer, I need 600 more dollars. Yeah. But there I, has to be an end game at some point. Even if she continued to extort money out of her parents, at some point, graduation he said either has to come or not come. Either she has to tell him, yeah, I just didn't graduate by that last yeah. class. But then sometime the answer has to come. Fake you know, diploma, a lot of, done. Yeah, a lot of people wonder whether or not college is worth it. I think college is more about learning to learn. And in this case, she hasn't <laughs> learned anything at all, and she totally made a fool out of herself while doing this. Now, the big question for this story is, have you ever lied to get out of something you did not want to do? JR. I'm telling you, man, I, I think my biggest pitfall is that I don't lie enough. What? Seriously, oh, I've please. gotten myself in bad situations because I'm too honest with people. Mm -hmm. I'll tell them some, some seriously messed up things just because I'm like, well, I can't lie to you. This Sorry, reminds just... me of the standard job interview answer where they ask you what <laughs> your flaws true. are, and you're like, my biggest flaw is that I'm a per perfectionist. Like, of course you've lied. There has to be a big the lie. The lies I'm told. told is like in elementary school when I, I let my friend cheat off of my spelling mm -hmm. assignment. That's like the lie I tell. Or, or, I don't know, or the, the same, it's the same random normal things. Like, oh yeah, I'm sick, I can't make it. It's, it's very, I'm very milk You've never done that? Lying. Yeah, that's, that's my level of lying. Yeah, about okay, things but I mean, have you ever lied to get out of something you didn't want to do? I mean, yeah, they're basic. There's nothing I've ever lied like, to get out of something I didn't want to do today? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's an interesting question, you know? I mean, this morning, I thought about calling the executive producer, David, and being like, I can't. Can't make the point, you know. <laughs> so right, those are basic. Everybody's right, so I mean, Yeah, we all get at, we all lie. Yeah. Uh, you guys aren't going to give me anything juicy. I mean, I oh, I've lied to get women out of my house. If that's uh. if that's juicy, you know. <laughs> that's pretty juicy. Yeah, like my parents are coming, or like the uh, is that smoke? 
you know, <laughs> like that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Go, 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 go. Yeah, that's happened before. I think the worst lie that I've told, and it's fresh in my memory, is when I went on a date with someone, and he was nice, I liked the guy, we were having a good time, um, but I, I wasn't feeling him 100%, so he asked me if I wanted to hang out more, and I said, no, I gotta go, I, I, you know, I gotta visit my family, and so, he left, and then I called over a guy that I really oh. do like, and then he oh, came. Yeah. See what I'm talking about? See, I, I, that's I, dirty. I wish I have done something like that. That's awesome. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know if it's awesome, but I did come clean with him later. I mean, I didn't tell him I had another guy over that oh. night, but I told him, hey, you know what? It's not working out. Whatever. I got it. It's not juicy. Very quickly, mm -hmm. I lied. Uh, I was working at Subway in college, and I didn't want to keep working there because they make you wear a hat, mm -hmm. a visor, mm -hmm. and I don't. Oh, who, no one wants to wear a visor. Who, who wears a visor? Um, <laughs> Uh, and so, uh, and the Redskins were on Monday Night Football. This was 1985, and, or maybe 86. And I, uh, I think 85, and I, I told the boss that I was failing, why I brought up failing geology, and that my dad wouldn't let me have a job until I got my grades up. And I was like, I guess I could work tonight if you want, but I like was super, and they were like, just, if you're not, if you're not gonna do it the subway way, there'll be no way at all, <laughs> and go home now. And wow. I, I had about a one mile run back to my house, and I, my dorm, and I ran, and I made kickoff. Oh my gosh, that's a, that's a pretty good lie. Yeah, the Redskins. Do, you, do you regret it now, now that the Redskins are the Redskins? <laughs> I can't believe, I'm sorry I even said the Redskins, yeah. All right guys, well tell us what you think. Comment in the section below. We want to hear what your absolute worst lie was and what did you try to get out of. We love hearing from you and we love reading your comments. 26 women wrote a letter to the Catholic Church because they are absolutely in love with priests and they want the Catholic Church to get rid of the celibacy rule so they can basically have as much sex as they want with these priests, maybe marry them, have a good time. And uh, I want to give you a little snippet of what they wrote. They said, we love these men and they love us. With humility, we place at your feet our suffering so that something can change, not just for us, but for the good of the whole church. Mm -hmm. And again, that was a letter published uh, to the Vatican Insider. And I want to know what you guys think about this. J.R. Jackson, make your point. Well, this is the thing. Uh, it sounds like this is coming just from the women. Uh, where's the letter from the priest saying, you know what? what I, think, I believe the word that really stuck out in that portion of the letter was our suffering. And they're suffering. They're yeah. like, um, I need it and I haven't got it, I need it. So like, I mean, I think maybe it'd be more effective. Maybe it's happened, I still know it, if both sides come at it and go, listen, we're suffering and we need to end the suffering together. The priests just wanna keep sneaking around. They don't wanna get married, because <laughs> they're guys. Um, uh, there's another word for uh, celibacy, another phrase for celibacy optional, and that phrase is sexually active. <laughs> no one chooses the celibacy option. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I would make the argument that, you know, aside from these women being in love with these priests, it's important to get rid of this whole stupid celibacy rule because you have all of these people that are holding in their sexuality, they want to be sexually active, and they can't, and so not only do they sneak around, oftentimes they sneak around with young children. So that's a big problem with the Catholic Church, they don't want to take ownership of it, they don't even believe in that argument, and it's absolutely ridiculous. And let's keep it real, um, these celibate priests the reason they're in love with these women is because they've they're already, already been in sex. love with these women. Yeah, yeah they're, not they're not waiting. They're not waiting. They, they want to be able to get married. They right. want to be able they, to. They want it to be open. They want. They want to stop sneaking around. They've been in and out of love with these women. <laughs> <laughs> one very quick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one very uh, quick. Um, uh, I think where the church has shown some progressiveness is that the church has sort of rejected the notion that the celibacy rules force has led uh, to the sexual exploitation of women, and I think the church correctly says. Uh, the pedophilia, that's a sickness, that's a mental disorder, it has nothing to do with celibacy. And I'm not sure that's totally wrong. I mean, they, they may not be completely disconnected, but I, I like that they recognize that, it's, that that's a separate entity. You don't decide to sleep with children because you're pent up sexually. Right. There, is, a, there has to be a reason why it's so prevalent right. within the Catholic Church. I think very church, quickly, though. and I know we gotta move quickly, but I think that main thing is, is that it's a predilection that somebody has and they think that joining the church will get them out of it. It will take it off the table, but it's a sickness and it's there and it doesn't come off the table yeah. merely they because somehow, you decide to be a priest. In, in deciding to do that, they somehow miss the point that they're gonna be around a bunch of children. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, they, they make a thought, then they have a thought process, then they screw it up. All right, we gotta get to the question. So have you ever had to keep a relationship secret because it was too scandalous? <laughs> ben, I wanna start off with you. And no more goody Hi. two-shoe my answers. Name's, my either name's way. Ben, how are you? It's nice to meet you. Tell me, um, I want the details. All right. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, of course, that's what, uh, 
that's what it is. Like my whole point in life is trying not to do that anymore. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yeah. Can we, I mean, obviously, I'm without naming names, can we get some juicy details? I was married once. I'm not married anymore. Oh, all <laughs> um, right. Oh, that's uh, pretty freaking juicy. Uh, right. But no, I mean, you know, look, it's it's, uh, I, you know, I, I've I've I, it, I've been imperfect, and I've flawed. <laughs> that's my truth. No, but it is true. And so now you you got a family, you got a daughter, and you're like, hey, it's the you know. Uh, you try and reform your ways. Can we back this up? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, let's go to JR, because I want to know what he has to say. This has to be back to high schools, only because a really good friend of mine, and, okay, well, back this hot started, school. yeah. Fuck you. He's such a goody two-shoes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. come on. But, well, I mean, you'll find out. <laughs> the, um, he, was, he was shy, he did not have to talk to girls, he was a little, I had just started figuring it out, this is my senior year of high school, and this girl he liked, you know, she was, playing on sports team stuff, he's a little bit tubby. He's a good friend of mine. He's like, can you talk to so-and-so for me? I mean, put in a good word, you guys are cool. And I was like, I don't think I should do it. I really don't think I should. And then, because I had a sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you talked to her. He pushed me to talk to her. I didn't want to. We talked. We talked. <laughs> we got together. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when I went to school the next day, I can't be seen with her, I can't be around her. I had to, for, it only lasted maybe a week that I couldn't tell him that I'm dating your, the girl that you are totally in love with. Damn. Because you sent me to talk to her. I mean, what I, I, my first thought was, I'm gonna go to him and say, listen, it's your fucking fault. You told me to go talk you to could, her. You, and, and not, yeah, I mean, he was the one controlling your behavior. Yeah, so. it only lasted a week and I couldn't <laughs> take it anymore. I was nice. like, I gotta tell him. I, uh, uh, I'll give you one more. Okay. I had, because maybe we use this one instead of the one I said before. <laughs> um, the, uh, I had a, uh, I had a, uh, a friend. <laughs> um, I may or may not, at one point in one of my jobs, uh, have ha had a relationship with an intern. Oh. And that How did you make the move? I know we're going we're going massively out of time, but I don't even give a shit because this is interesting. How do you make a move on an intern? How did that develop? I offered her two hundred dollars. <laughs> oh, that would have yeah. that, that works. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. She's an intern. She's making any money. It was like surprisingly easy. <laughs> um, right. Well, the way I did it was there was beers. Right. You just get we'll, a little drunk. We'll, we'll get right. to that much later. I was much, much younger when that happened. So. All right, all right, fair enough. All right, so I guess I should answer my own question. Um, yes, of course I've had a relationship that I've kept secret because it's not necessarily scandalous, but it's more of a relationship that I'm not proud of. It's you know usually someone that uh, I know isn't good for me, and everyone around me knows he isn't good for me, but. I just like him, so I'll keep seeing him, and then I'll I'll, I'll hide the fact that I'm still seeing him. From everyone? From, from everyone? Just like yeah, parents yeah, yeah. Type of thing. No, no, no. First of all, no one gets to know who I'm. My parents never get to know who I'm dating unless, like, oh, there's a chance that I might want to marry this guy, mm -hmm. and that's only happened with one guy. Um, but anyone that I'm like casually dating, my parents have no idea. <laughs> Sorry, mom. All right. Uh, so tell us what you guys think. Have you ever had to lie about a scandalous relationship? Give us the juicy details. Don't be a goody do two shoes like Jr. Although what you did Mine in high school was pretty, was pretty shady. Yeah, yeah. Tell us what you guys think. We love hearing from you, and we'll see you soon. There's a new anti-aging product that Jennifer Aniston has played a huge role in, and it's referred to as Spanx for your face. It's actually a product that you put on. It's a thin uh, polymer film that you put on your skin, and it lasts for about 16 hours. Um, and then after that, you turn into a pumpkin, and you're no longer attractive, <laughs> according to articles and reports on this. It's known as Neotensil, and it's kind of interesting because it's non-invasive. It's not like going under the knife. It's not something that's permanent, so I guess that's a downside of it. But uh, we have obviously a huge market and a, a huge number of women who might be interested in this product, even a huge number of men that would be interested in this product. So uh, I think that this is a fascinating new development. What do you guys think? Well, this is, okay, I'm trying to see the difference between this and uh, maybe it's a, a stronger version or, or a better product than makeup because this sounds very similar. Maybe it lasts a little longer. Mm -hmm. We've been doing this already, so it's just a matter of it not being, again, you said it's not invasive. We finding out a year later that it's, pieces of it sink into your skin and then start sprouting, you know, carrots or some shit. Who knows? Like, but outside of this, it's just, it's fine that it's just something that, it takes care of you for a minute. I, I don't see much of an issue. Or maybe it's just groundbreaking because it's different. Ben? I think it's remarkable that we can blow up, we can find and then blow up with a drone, a moving SUV in Waziristan, but it's taken us till 2014 to figure out the one thing that women want most, which is to look younger, simply. So to me, it's like, 
it's a little shocking given the level of science we have that it's taken this long to find. So if this, if the Spanx for your face actually works. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that this is a great development. I love the fact that it's non-invasive. There is the element of deception, right? Like so you're dating someone or you go out on a date, you're looking all hot, you know, you got the polymer film on your face and you look like this. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like 16 hours passes by, you wake up next to this dude mm -hmm. and you're like, like that, like it's just not, it's not a good look. So I wish it was a little more permanent, I guess, and uh, you know, something less invasive than going through plastic surgery. But I think it's a great development. I mean, for women who want to do this, awesome. Jennifer Aniston is obviously playing a role and she looks fabulous. This is so. a huge mistake for Jennifer Aniston. Huge mistake. She's yeah. too involved with this company because the possibility still exists of what JR says that it's seeping into your skin and horrible things are going to happen and everybody who gets this is going to have face cancer. Like that, 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 yeah. like to me, like when you see, although it is, it is FDA approved because you have to get a prescription from a doctor, but that says it's still like when celebrities endorse healthcare products that seem too good to be true there's a good chance they're too good to be true. Yeah. Like, like the Who cares? You're going to look good. The $175 million you make in a year from the Friends reruns, that's not, quite, that's not paying your bills quite enough? Like, just let it go. All right, so here's the question that I want to ask you guys. If you were given the option to look good for the rest of your life, but it would mean that it would take an entire year out of your life, would you take that option? JR. Uh, sure. What year is it? Year, say I live to 88, 89? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I can go at 87. So, because that's way later. Like, yeah, you make and, that offer at 82, I'm probably going to turn it down. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you know it's over. <laughs> yeah. So, um, because also because my uh, the only fear I have as far as I'm not afraid of like this sounds like I'm a tough guy. I'm not afraid of death. But the thing is, I'm afraid of getting old and not being able to move anymore. That's the biggest fear. I'd rather be dead than to be sitting in the bed. So, if it takes a year off my 89th to 90th, or say 95th to 96th, and I'm starting to get decrepit. Uh, hey, cut it out. It's cool. When I was 35 to 55, I still looked like I was 35. I think, I think the idea is you don't know when that year is. Maybe you only right. lived to be 40, yeah. you right. know, eight. Then exactly. all of a sudden, well, does by it the matter way, though? Would it really matter to you if, like, let's say? Well, the say question you ask is that you, you get the option to look good the rest of your life. So I'm going to assume that you meant the option to look better. Mm-hmm. Well. <laughs> um, uh, I would. Uh, I would probably. Uh, I'd probably do it. I'd probably take it right now. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. of course, one hundred percent. It's not even a question. Whatever, I lose a year of my life, but I'm going to look <laughs> fabulous, and I never have to worry about you know aging, well, physically aging or any of that again. That would be the ideal scenario. That sounds extremely vain, but it's the truth, and I like that you guys were honest about it as well. What would you do if you were given those two options? Would you want to look good, uh, but take a year off your life, or would you want to age naturally and and you know do what normal people do, but you get to live your full life? <laughs> Tell us what you think in the comments section below. Researchers have found that beer goggles actually do exist. Now these are researchers at the University of Bristol and they did a test where they had uh, one group drink alcohol and another group drink a non-alcoholic placebo. And then they showed the individuals different images including men, women and also landscapes. And what they found was that people who were drinking were more likely to find the man attractive or the woman attractive or the landscape more beautiful. So they're saying, hey, you know what? The alcohol has a direct correlation to whether or not you find certain things attractive, which of course I think is common sense and I'm not surprised by the study, but it is interesting to have some science back up that notion. Now, Ben, make your point. I agree with you. I don't know that we needed a scientific study to determine that alcohol might impair your, your judgment. We know you're not supposed to drive drunk. You're not supposed to come to work drunk. You're not supposed to get drunk in front of your boss. And, and, and this, I would suggest either that you shouldn't doink drunk. <laughs> doink? <laughs> doink. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> doink. Um, <laughs> the, uh, or maybe you should um, because, uh, uh, because, in fact, maybe it's good. You sort of open yourself, you low, maybe lowering your standards regarding sex isn't the worst thing in the world. Oh, good. that's interesting. JR. Yeah, you know what? I, I, I did my own research. You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Extensive, <laughs> I, I'm sure. For so many years on this yeah. uh, I just didn't publish my findings, you know, and I wish I'd have gotten ahead of the curve on this. Because there was one time Are I know. still collecting data? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to start this evening. Yeah, all right, yeah. <laughs> you have to have a gather once in a while. I, I discovered, and this is, this is a new phenomenon which I wish they would figure out because I noticed this myself. There's self beer goggles. You know, you pre drink sometimes. I'm at home. Yeah. This is years ago I did it. I was drinking and I was like, I'm about to go out. And you look at me and you go, shit, I look good. Totally. And then I went, oh fuck, this is, a, this is like self beer goggles. I probably don't look very good right now. 
something's wrong and I'm missing it because I'm drunk already. Yep. So this, that study, I want that study next. Yeah, I, I think I agree with Ben when it comes to lowering your standards and how it's not necessarily a terrible thing. But what I also love is the liquid courage that comes along with drinking, right? So you think you're the best dancer at the club. You think you look the best. You have like the confidence to go up to the hottest guy in some cases or the hottest woman in some cases uh, when you otherwise wouldn't have the courage to do that. So I think that's actually a really great thing about alcohol. That's when, the liquid, that's when the liquid courage is great. When the liquid courage isn't great is when like, you get super confident that you're the smartest person in the room. Oh like, no, that's, that's the worst. Right, Absolutely. Exactly. And it, liquid courage also sucks when it kind of passes into the territory of I'm going to puke in the dumpster next to the club because <laughs> I can't hold my liquor. That's courageous. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever gotten lucky because the person you were with was wearing beer goggles? Mm. Ben. Well, first of all, it's never luck. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I definitely. I just don't think so. Yeah. All right. I Jim. thought I was gonna be the only one to say that. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Only because uh, I feel like those would you would have to see it happen afterwards. So if you got lucky mm -hmm. and then you never hear from the chick again, you're like, oh, I don't think she liked yeah, me. I, I, and I and that never happened, you know. Right. That uh, that right. I only sound like like that never happens. They, there's always an effort. Like there've been people who've like b had enough of me, but it's generally not <laughs> right away. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. Eventually. There, by the way, there have been many people who've had enough of me. Um, but yeah, but it usually, it usually, it usually takes a while for me to wear people down, mm -hmm. and then it takes a while for me to, uh, to, for them to get entirely sick of me. But both <laughs> things eventually always happen. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it's just to answer my own question, I mean. <laughs> anyway, tell us what you guys think. <laughs> I'm obviously kidding. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, I honestly haven't, like, I've, I haven't had very many hookups. I'm, and I'm not just trying to be a goody two shoes here. Like, I don't usually get drunk and, and have JR, crazy sex. Hey, JR and I can, we'll, we'll stand behind you. Like, there's no guy who sleeps with you and then goes, oh, I can't believe I did that. What is the thing? Not, have you ever, gonna have, you never know. Have, you never know. Have you ever, like you said, the liquid courage, have you ever been surprised once you did get the guy and go, hmm? I thought he was maybe a little too good. Not that you, not yeah, because those beer goggles totally. you had the sex over, just because he responded correctly. 100% I've been surprised, yeah. Um, all right, so tell us what you guys think. <laughs> Answer the question, because we want to know if you've had similar experiences and if you've ever had the luck of another person drinking to the point where they've had sex with you and you thought you didn't deserve it. We want to hear uh, in the comment section below, and we'll see you guys soon. A very, very attractive model was walking down the streets of France naked, without pants. In fact, she was just wearing a thong, but they spray painted uh, jeans on her and it looked very realistic, but no one seemed to notice that she wasn't actually wearing pants, that she was just wearing body paint. Take a look. I need to figure out what that song was because it's really good. But yeah, as you can see, it was not spray paint, it was body paint, but nonetheless, she had pa pants painted on her. She was really just naked out there on the streets and no one seemed to notice. And uh, I want to know what you guys think. Ben, make your point. Uh, my point is I'd be a lot more impressed if she were wearing boot cut jeans. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're hilarious. What about you? Um, my point being, they're wrong. People noticed. <laughs> you think so? You just didn't see them notice. If you're walking behind her, she walks past you. Uh, if, if those were jeans that are that tight, people notice that right, too. Right, but they, they didn't notice that she was not, they just would have thought she looks great and those jeans are... If I was toy. walking those streets of France, I would have noticed that ass was moving yeah. outside of some jeans. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I don't find this surprising at all. I think that in the age of skinny jeans and yeah, right. you know people wearing mm. really, really tight clothing, you know, you just think that it's another woman wearing something that's trendy and fashionable at the moment. So I think that's the, kind of amazing. I think it was a strange decision to to wear the the thong, also. Like I think you wanted, and I don't just mean that she's kind of a wuss for not doing it fully. Yeah. Like yeah. That look that looked a little strange to see the that's thong. What, yeah. That was a kind of a giveaway. Like just do it. It would have worked without the thong. Well, 
Well, I mean, you might have a little lip action going on, and then people would be able to know that she's naked, like depending right away. Depending on the woman. <laughs> well, depending on the woman, yes. But and I can guess I'm maybe that you don't want to get a ton of paint in there. That's probably. <laughs> That's another. Why I'm not. Want to protect I, the vag? You know. I'm not a. Uh, I'm not a doctor, <laughs> but that's, that's a guess. So what's the craziest thing you've done or would do in order for one of your videos to go viral? So we're all on some sort of show. We're all on camera. So tell me what you guys think. JR. I, I, you know what? I'm, I'm old. I'm an old guy. I'm only 34 years old, but I'm old. Yeah, because so I wouldn't old. do anything. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I mean, when it comes to viral, I mean, because that's the thing. You're chasing something. And I'm more with the organic nature of it. When something goes viral, it's because you didn't expect it to. Yeah. So now we've changed the meaning of viral to meaning, I think I can make this go viral rather than just, I did this thing, man, I can't believe that, that went viral. All I was doing was standing there next to the road and then this guy knocked my head off, that asshole. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's supposed to be natural. So for me to do it, I'd, I'd, I'm too busy judging myself, going, are you really going to keep doing this? Are you really going to keep trying this? Ben? Yeah, I mean, you, you know me. and I'm just, I'm Nothing. <laughs> I'm the, uh, I would... Uh, I mean, I'm ashamed sometimes to tweet about things that we've done on the show. Oh, like, that happens like, all like the time. Like, to me, I'm like, the crazy <laughs> thing I've done, I once tweeted out a story I did. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> that's, yeah. Uh, but that's about it. There's, I mean, I'd say most of the, by far, no question, I'd say 85% of the things I do here, I don't even tweet about. So I, I had the exact same answer as you guys. Like, I won't do anything just for the intent of going viral. I would do what I think is interesting, especially when it comes to news. I think we have a certain responsibility, yada, yada. But then I remembered early on uh, in my stint with TYT, we covered really ridiculous stories with the sole intention of that story going viral. And I always go back to this uh, topic or this example because it's probably the clearest example. We used to do a game called Guess the Camel Toe on the second hour of The Young Turks. And it was fun, I enjoyed it, it and a lot of those videos went viral, but it isn't something that I would do now because it's just not worth the time. Do you know I don't even know what that is still to You this day. know what a camel toe is. No, I don't, is. I don't. It's like a thing, I know it's, it's sex and it's like a woman wearing something too tight, but I don't even know quite. So you mean you've never asked anyone is why you don't know? I've had it explained to me and I instantly forget. Do like, you want me to explain it to you again? <laughs> I think we'll just continue on. I'll just continue right. to live in a blissful ignorance about the camel toe. All right, but fair that enough. That does sound like a great show. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's actually blissful to know. Uh, who, uh, who was the production company who did Guess the Camel Toe? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. And if you've ever done anything to get some attention, whether it's online or in your personal lives, share that story. We love hearing from you. Share it in the comment section below. And I actually really want to get together at some point and read some of your reactions because well, I think it'd be, be really fun. Yeah, go ahead. I heard a guy at Howard Stern today who uh, um, uh, videoed his own masturbation session, which is, it's both gross and skin crawling, and then as Howard said, it's a little bold. Like it was, Why like, did he do that? Did just because you could hear it, like he's doing play by play, uh, and he uses the, keeps calling himself a masturbator, which is a difficult word to hear someone say. <laughs> Wait, but what did he do he with referred the video? To us, he like it because he called himself, a, he posted it, and called himself a dirty masturbator. Oh, he's a bad boy. <laughs> See, right? There, <laughs> right. there it is. But uh, and I, we heard a couple clips of it, and uh, it was disturbing. But, sounds yeah. sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Howard Stern always so on the cutting edge not, of programming. I don't think any of us would be willing to go that far. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us, Jr. Jackson, Ben Mankiewicz. You guys can check them out on the TYT network, and of course, you can check me out on the Young Turks Monday through Friday from six to eight p.m. Eastern time. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Remember to comment. Tell us what you guys think, and we'll see you next week.